Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So, in this short tutorial video, I am going to show you how to easily prepare basic copper carbonate from household baking soda and copper sulfate. But why would I even want basic copper carbonate in the first place? Well, it not only has a nice color, but it is also really useful in many chemical reactions mainly as a catalyst, and I will be using it to turn some vitamin B3 into pyridine in a future video. Anyway, the ingredients that you are going to need for this reaction are rather simple, and you just have to get yourself 76 grams of sodium bicarbonate, otherwise known as baking soda, and 128 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate. The reaction of making basic copper carbonate can be done from just these ingredients without doing any intermediate steps, however, I find the use of sodium bicarbonate pretty messy, and when I do this reaction, I usually convert it to sodium carbonate. This conversion is incredibly simple, and to do it, you are just going to need some baking soda, a pan and a heat source. The first step is to get your baking soda. I used the food grade one which I brought at the grocery store, but any source of sodium bicarbonate will do. I used three packets, each one supposedly containing 100 grams of it, but when I weighted them, it turned out that I got scammed out of a whole 5 grams. As I said before, for making the basic copper carbonate, you are just going to need 76 grams, I used more, because I want to do some other experiments involving sodium carbonate. Anyway, when you weighted out your sodium bicarbonate, you can just dump it into a pan or other heat resistant container and crank up the heat. When the sodium bicarbonate heats up, it breaks down into sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide and water. This is actually the same reaction that makes cake with baking soda grow in the oven, and that is why everyone calls sodium bicarbonate baking soda. Sodium carbonate on the other hand is a little less popular of the two, although it also has some important applications like being used for washing stuff, hence it's commonly referred to as washing soda. It can also be combined with hydrogen peroxide to make something called sodium percarbonate, which is a useful cleaning agent that most of us know as the active oxygen detergent. Anyway, after heating and mixing the sodium bicarbonate for about 15 minutes, I took it off the heat, weighted it, and my yield was a little higher than the theoretical. Thankfully, this didn't mean that I completely screwed up a one-step reaction, and all I have to do to fix it was just to let it heat for some more time. After about 30 minutes of heating, I again weighted it, and this time the yield was the same as the theoretical, which was just perfect. So now, to make the basic copper carbonate, I weighted out 48 grams of my homemade sodium carbonate and 128 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate. Again, if you used 76 grams of sodium bicarbonate at the beginning, you should end up with exactly 48 grams of sodium carbonate. To prepare the ingredients for the reaction, I have to dissolve them in water and heat them up, and to do that, I got my hot plate and placed a stir bar in the beaker with the copper sulfate, to which I then poured around 300 ml of distilled water and started the heating. The copper sulfate dissolves really slowly in cold water, but when the water is hot, it should dissolve much more easily. While the copper sulfate solution was warming up, I got my beaker with sodium carbonate and added about 150 ml of distilled water into it. It also won't dissolve by itself, so I have to heat it up. I don't have a second hot plate with stirring dough, so I just used my electric stove and a spatula. After a few minutes of heating, the ingredients dissolved into the water, forming pretty cool solutions, and the copper sulfate one was a little cloudy due to some impurities, but this shouldn't be a problem. Before adding the solutions together, I noticed that the total volume of liquid in the beakers is larger than the volume of the bigger beaker, and thank god I noticed that, because if I added the solutions too early, it would result in a horrible mess. 
I got the biggest beaker that I have and poured the copper sulfate solution into it. Then under strong steering, I began to slowly add the sodium carbonate solution. The sodium carbonate solution has to be added very slowly, since upon its addition, the reaction releases a ton of carbon dioxide bubbles, which can result in the reaction mix overflowing, which has nearly happened to me. I added the sodium bicarbonate solution over the course of about 5 minutes, and after that was done, I turned off the steering and heating. When the solution sat for a while, I could see a light blue layer forming on the bottom of the beaker, and this was actually my basic copper carbonate, which is insoluble in water. The upper layer was still pretty blue, which indicated the presence of some unreacted copper sulfate, and to make everything react, I just left the mixture for the night. The next morning I was hoping to see a crystal clear solution, but it looked the same as before, so I just accepted it and moved on to the next step. Now I had to filter the mixture to get rid of the byproducts and separate my precious basic copper carbonate, and to do that I just used my vacuum filtration setup, but if you don't have one, a gravity filtration will work almost as well. I washed the basic copper carbonate a few times with distilled water, dried it on the filter, and proceeded to transfer it onto a piece of paper, which I then placed into the oven for 2 hours to dry. When the 2 hours were up, I took it out of the oven and now it looked the same as before, but was a little bit lighter in color and had a really fluffy texture. I then got myself my mortar and started to grind the fluffy chunks into a fine powder that looked and sounded like one of these ASMR videos. After that was done, I weighted the powder and it turned out that I got 61 grams of my product, which is a pretty good yield that is much more than enough to make the pyridine, and since I have so much of it, I decided to have some fun with it and make a crude paint. Basic copper carbonate was actually used as a paint in ancient Egypt, and I wanted to recreate it, so I got some of the basic copper carbonate powder that I made and ground it down even more so it would make a better paint. I then got some linseed oil that I brought a few months ago and added some of it into the powder. It creates a slurry with a pretty good consistency and to test it out I got myself a piece of paper and the closest thing that I have to a paintbrush, which is this cotton swab. The quality of this paint is very bad and combined with my expert painting skills I couldn't paint anything nice with it. I tried to paint my channel logo because it is almost the same color as the paint, but failed miserably. Also, basic copper carbonate leaves stains on everything since it's insoluble in water and the only way to remove them is to use some kind of an acid, I used some dilute hydrochloric. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and as always, big thanks go to my Patreons, especially the 5 plus dollar ones, who are Arto d Riley Leprogo, Joseph Kudi and M.I. If you want to support my channel, you can also become a Patreon, and see you guys in the next video.